Hi, my name is Mike Weiss, and I'm the Director of Communications for the Cantor's Assembly, and I want to welcome you to Abayudaya Unity, a concert to benefit the Jews of Uganda. Who are the Jews of Uganda? A lot of people think they're one of the lost tribes, but in fact, their community chose to practice Judaism over a hundred years ago. As a member of the first cantorial mission to Uganda, I was lucky enough to meet these people. On a day-to-day -day basis, their lives couldn't be more different than what I'm used to. But when we walked into the synagogue, even the synagogue that had only half a tin roof, all of a sudden everything felt familiar. The Sidurim felt familiar, the prayers, the sounds, the Nusach. For 10 days, we daven together, we sang together, we ate together, we celebrated together, and we came away with deep and lasting friendships and a real sense of purpose, a sense of mission, if you will, to continue to help them any, in any way we can. The government's crushing COVID-19 lockdown has brought many in the community to the brink of starvation, and that's why we're here. While you're listening to this program that we created for you to enjoy, we also hope that you'll be generous, and that if you want to, if you can, that you will give generously to help us feed them. At any point in the video, if you want to stop, pause it, and go to our website and make a donation, we're not going to be offended if you stop. <laughs> Even if you don't come back, we won't be offended. It's most important that we provide support to this community. But if you do want to make a donation at any point, please visit www.canters.org forward slash abayudaya. We have an amazing program lined up for you tonight, and I really hope you enjoy it. Thanks for being here, and now I present Abayudaya Unity. My name is David Lipp. I'm the current president of the Cantor's Assembly. A little over a year ago, 10 friends and I went on a mission, a very mini mission, Cantor's Assembly mission. Today, Abayudaya in Uganda, we learned so much. We made so many friends. We brought a Torah. We ate goat, kosher, shechted goat for Shabbos. First time I've ever done that. Burundi mm -hmm. is the response. Yeah. yeah. Okay, it's like Boker Tov, Boker Or. Right. Okay. We were welcomed. Lots of kipot, this is one of the many of them that we bought, sold throughout the United States to support that often stressed community. Well, that community is stressed beyond normal right now. Last year they were stressed. This year they're not sure where their next meal is coming from. And I know that many in America are suffering. Some have died with this horrific virus. Some have dear relatives who have died. Some have friends. Who have died. Everyone is somehow connected to this horrific disease. But for most of us, and I really speak for myself and for many people that I know, this is really an inconvenience. We don't get to eat as much or to go out to restaurants like we used to. Most importantly, we don't get to be in person with as many people as we like to be. And it's one of those things that makes life worth living, so we miss that. But thank God for most of us, we don't wonder where our next meal is coming from. Well, for my friends in Uganda, they are worried where their next meal, frankly, meals are coming from. And we can help them. And I hope you do. I can tell you that I am, both financially and by participating in this project. And I hope you will too. I know that all of us are stressed financially right now, but for those of us who are wealthy enough and fortunate enough and privileged enough to not worry about where our next meal is coming from, let's think about what we can do. I'd like to sing for you 
one of the psalms that we heard so many times in the language of Luganda, Psalm 93. And now, in my synagogue, we often sing this in Hebrew, Psalm 93. Adonai mala geut lavish, lavish Adonai. Oz hitaza, afti kon teve, bal timot, nachon kisacha meaz, meolamata, nasu neharot adonai, nasu neharot kolam. Isu neharot tochia mikolot ma'im rabi. I am Joseph from Northbend Synagogue. Shalom. Adir b'marom Adonai edotecha nemnu me'od levetcha nava kodesh Adonai. Shalom, shalom, get us some bread. This is Kira Joel from the Bremen for a minute. Leorech, Leorech Yami. Thank you. Oh Lord, we beseech you. Ana Hoshiana, Ana Hoshiana, Ana Hasir Hana. Dear friends and family out there, I am Gashom Sizomu, the rabbi and spiritual leader of Abadiah Congregation. I am usually hesitant to ask, but this time I have uh, failed to remain hesitant because our people are really suffering. We are faced with a double tragedy here that uh, at this period of time, food is not a luxury as it is a planting season. And we have to wait until the end of three uh, months, which is the beginning of June, to have to realize some harvest. So at this moment, as I speak, farmers are looking at their crops grow and there's no food. But I say the double tragedy because it is at this time that the government has locked down the country and the husbands that would usually fend for their families have no business. They cannot go out as casual workers. They cannot go out even to ride border borders. They can't do anything that brings money to, uh, to supplement the little that might be available at home. So there is a, a total lack of food and the people are actually doubting their life. I wanted to add also that the food you give will give, go to all our communities, the Orthodox community of Puti, and also our community in Kenya, in Old Kalau, our Masolti community in Kenya, near Nairobi. I also wanted to tell you how uh, wonderful the Kent has assembly visit and also the rabbinic assembly visit to our community was. It meant so much for our community. We were very much encouraged and energized by the visit of the Kenters and the rabbis who are the leaders of our people. We felt a connection with a larger Jewish world and we actually isolation that has been uh, pervading our community in the past was a uh, history when we received our guests and uh, we hope that uh, our relationship with the Kenta's assembly and the rabbinic assembly continues to yield good fruits and I think this is uh, the time that uh, the leaders of our people can uh, rise up to in support of our community that is in need as I speak. I also wanted to tell you uh, about the video that I sent 
to Kent awaits. It was a, uh, a donation, a truck full of food uh, that was invaded by pe the beneficiaries. They did not wait for the procedures of uh, distribution. They went and they could not wait. They went and they grabbed the food themselves, everybody taking whatever they could. Uh, I hope you get time to look at that video. Hi, my name is Rabbi Noam Katz. During this extremely difficult and harrowing time in our lives, we need to all do our best to extend a hand to those individuals and communities who are most vulnerable, who are most in need. This song is dedicated to my brothers and sisters from Uganda, from the Abu Daya Jewish community, thinking of all of you and all those souls around the world. We are united. Amen. This is yourself from the Lunas Nagos. Come on, Ambe, 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 his Ambe, 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 his Elehai, 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 Ambe, Shalom, shalom, get a sembre, I'm Hannah, from Nathan. One last time, Amen, 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 Let's all live and work together. In late January and early February 2019, a group of about a dozen people, mostly cantors from across the United States, crossed the ocean, landed in Africa, and traveled over hard roads. Oh yes, very hard, bumpy, and dusty roads to connect to the Jewish community of Uganda, popularly known as Abba Udaya, Uganda for Jewish people. Over a year has passed since then, but their melodies, their smiles, their welcome, and their determination burn as brightly now as they did then. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Rabbi Gershom Sizomu, their indefatigable leader, Chief Rabbi of Uganda, Minister of Parliament, and now friend, explained to us that their lilting melodies were a calculated response to a communal need. In the early 1980s, as he and other members of his family and other members of the community sought to rebuild 
after the unimaginable horrors of living and dying under Idi Amin. They found something magnetic in these song styles that they heard in the Pentecostal churches. The singing and celebrating was bringing people to church. So Gershom and other community leaders used the same style, blended with the uniquely Jewish content of our Psalms, but in their native language of Luganda, to draw people back, to draw people in, and to raise people up. They rebuilt after their community was devastated. Today, we not only find ourselves stymied throughout the world by this COVID-19 pandemic, but the Abiyudaya now stand on the brink of another devastation, this time from hunger. Not from the disease itself, but from the government's crushing measures to control it. And as we ask ourselves how we will rebuild our own communities here at home, how much more urgent is the challenge facing our brothers and sisters in Uganda. We are honored to share the great vibrance for Jewish life we found in Uganda and what you can do to help it continue to thrive even in the midst of this great existential crisis. Samson and Yosef, my father, uh, we are happy and we thank Hashem for being alive. Uh, we say that we are alive today, like Torah says, and we are, we thank Hashem for that time. Uh, it's a bit difficult as the whole world is experiencing this, and most especially here in Africa and Kenya, Uganda, and all the Africa, we are facing both problem of uh, the virus, and as well, most of people are farmers and businessmen who get food to mouth and uh, because there is the shortage of transportation there is a lockdown it is a difficult situation and we ask well wishers and people who really love to help to please if you are able giving the hand such that people who don't have food, people who are suffering, they can get food. We thank you again and we embrace love as a whole world as a way of finishing this epidemic. So we thank you. We pray Hashem that this comes to an end and we get back to life and uh, back to normal and we feel the love again it's a lot of lesson that we have learned thank you shalom. shalom this is for our sisters and brothers in uganda
Bemba Sinagoy. <laughs> Bemba Sinagoy. <laughs> Friends, Rabbi Bradley Shavit Artson from the Ziegler School of Rabbinic Studies, American Jewish University in Los Angeles. I have the privilege of being the dean of a rabbinical school that had an extraordinary young visitor many years ago, Gershom Sizomo, the spiritual head of the Abba Yudaya community in Uganda, gave a call and said he was interested in considering attending our rabbinical school. That meeting was extraordinary and it set off a chain of events that continues to dazzle me and to transform the Jewish world. Gershom Sizomo was, from the first time I met him, a prince of a man, noble and kind and decent and smart and remarkably generous, but always keeping in the top of his mind the needs of his community and of his people and always asking himself what could he be doing to help lift up his community and all of the people in Uganda. And he did that from day one. As he was studying with us at the Ziegler School in Los Angeles, he was also meeting with donors. He was also cultivating a base of support. He was enlisting the local congregations and speaking across the country, sharing the music and the wisdom and the insights of the Abu Yudaya. Every summer he would fly back to Uganda and he would work as the rabbi of his community and then return. He spent the third year in Jerusalem becoming fluent in Hebrew and honing his connections there. And then when he was ordained, he invited myself and a group of other rabbis to fly to Uganda to install him in what was a remarkable national celebration with priests and bishops and imams and local chieftains and members of the government all assembled together to celebrate the leadership of Rabbi Sizomo and what his extraordinary community has done through sheer willpower and determination and talent. And now, my friends, they need us. They need us desperately because of the ravages of COVID-19. Ugandans have been ordered to stay sheltered in their homes, as have so many of us, but the consequences there are dire. There's a shortage of food, there's a shortage of resources. They need us to be able to stand with them just as they stand with us in so many other occasions. You know, I know this firsthand because the, the Ziegler School was the place that benefited from having Gershom in our classrooms, in our community, in our presence, and continues to feel him as a member of our community. We're in conversation with other young members of his community who are also intending to attend rabbinical school and to spread the light of an open but traditional Judaism in Africa where it gets such a beautiful reception. But we can't just teach them Bible and Talmud and psychology and history and philosophy. That's not enough. We also have to make sure that there's enough food for their community, that they're able to work and support themselves. And in this time, that community needs us to stand with them just as they stand with us. So, so I want to reach out to you and I want to plead with you, please. I know that things are challenging everywhere and for all of us. But in Uganda, this is life or death. And these are our brothers and sisters. And so we have to stand up with them. We have to make sure that they're able to get through this challenging time so that they and we together can help contribute to the Jewish Renaissance that is coming not only for Eastern Africa, but around the world. For everything you're able to do, thank you and God bless you. May it be returned to you a thousandfold. And I pray that you have the satisfaction of knowing that there are decent, kind, hardworking people for whom your gift will make a life or death difference. Thank you. 
God bless you. I'm Chazan Jeremy Stein of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And I'm Amanda Rupenthal Stein. I first met Rabbi Gershom Sizomu as a cantorial school student studying for the year in Jerusalem, and he was a rabbinical school student. And I had the wonderful opportunity to sit with him and learn his community's unique music. audition for uh, for jobs as a cantor, I brought one of his melodies to this congregation and it turned out that the rabbi, Rabbi Jacob Herber, had recently been on a mission to visit the Abayudaya and so uh, we already had some common ground from the beginning. And I uh, was, uh, before we met and before we got married, um, a member of that congregation, Congregation Beth Israel, um, now near Tamid in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, and I had had the privilege of hearing Rabbi Suzomu when he came, um, talking about his journey as a then uh, musicology master student. I was beginning to become interested in Jewish music. I'm now working on my PhD in musicology um, with an emphasis mostly on um, Jewish music in um, Europe, but this has become a real passion of mine, a secondary area, how Jews of non-Western communities, and particularly the Abayudaya, express their connection to world Judaism while maintaining their own personal selves and their own really unique and amazing story. And you found that there's surprising overlap between the development of Jewish music in Uganda and in uh, Eastern and Central Europe, right? Thinking about how we engage with change, how we engage with our communities growing and evolving and becoming part of the broader Jewish world, as well as um, who we are in our unique place as Jews as we make music. And I've really come to admire how the Abayudaya um, centralize music in their real uh, path as Jews and their day-to-day -day life and their um, prayers. So when we had the opportunity to visit the Abayudaya in Uganda, uh, we jumped on the opportunity and we had an amazing time meeting this very unique Jewish community and learning their unique, um, both what makes them unique and what, uh, what we share about uh, the way we practice Judaism. And I was uh, fortunate enough to learn many more. We were fortunate enough to learn many more of their beautiful music. And this was coming up on their 100th anniversary celebration. And I'm not sure we'd really, um gotten home yet to Milwaukee. We might have still been in Uganda and I said to Jeremy, I want to come back for the 100th and he said, okay, you should. <laughs> um, so six months after we uh, went on the Cantor's Assembly's uh, Solidarity Mission to Uganda, I was one of a few who was able to go back um, and celebrate with the Obaya Daya and the several thousand um, Jews, uh, Christians, and Muslims who came, up, came to Nabagoya to celebrate the 100th anniversary. Um, which is really a profound and amazing achievement for this community and um, it was really humbling to be a part of it, um, to listen and to hear and to go back um, even six months later, um, welcomed back with open arms to see my friends there and so many people that we love. And continue to stay in touch with. <laughs> I'm in
My name is Rabbi Joel Seltzer. I'm the executive director of Camp Ramah in the Poconos. For the past two summers, we've had the privilege and the pleasure of having two members of our tzevet, our staff, come from Uganda, the Abba Yudaya Jewish community there, Esau and Yonatan. They've been such treasured members of our community, quickly becoming part of our Ramah family, that we feel their presence even though we might be miles apart. In this time of global pandemic, we ask that you remember the Jews in the farest reaches of the world, such as Esau and Yonatan. And if we can extend our love and our support to them, I know we bring our entire Jewish community closer together. Kol Yisrael Arevim Zebazeh. Thank you. My name's um, called Wanani Esau. I'm the president of Marom Jewish community in Uganda, in the capital state Kampala and it's the only Jewish community in Kampala, Uganda. I'm going to talk about the situation in Uganda today, how the current situation is about the COVID, with COVID-19 taking all over the world and Uganda inclusive. Um, right now, the situation in Uganda is very alarming. First of all, we have about 81 Conf 85 confirmed cases of COVID-19 patients and what the government de decided to do was to close everything down to tell everyone to stay home and only allowed the people whom they termed as essential workers to operate. Among those are the medical workers, uh, some engineers and people who work in the food markets and drivers of lorries and those people who work in pharmacies. So as I talk now, that's the situation in Kampala. Um, I want to thank people who donated money to our community in Kampala and we were able to buy food. I want to thank Rabbi Adra, Rabbi uh, uh, Kenta, the Kenta's Assembly, uh, Aunt Sharon and Uncle Kenny, uh, and other people who gave out the money. Thank you very much. Shalom. My name is Ariella Moss Petersail. I'm the camp director at Machane Ramah, the California, Camp Ramah in California. Um, we've had the privilege over the years, two different uh, summers, to have staff members who came from Uganda, from Abayudaya, and it was such a gift for our community, for our Kehila here to meet. Jews from different parts of the world than the countries they know. They contributed so much to our ruach, to our spirit here, and uh, we were able to stay in touch with them. Can One of them know? even uh, reconnected to people from her time in LA here with her family, um, and it was just an incredible opportunity. So we are grateful for the partnership. We are sending you love and strength, chizuk, and uh, thank you. Thank you for giving us that gift. Hi everyone, I'm Nishama Karlibach. We learn that if you hear somebody crying, it is because you are uniquely chosen to dry their tears. Today I come to you urgently on behalf of the Abayudaya community in Uganda. These precious people are starving, literally trapped in their homes, unable to get food. And this should not be, friends. All of us are in this isolation together. All of us are crying, praying, scared, please give generously to try to help these incredible people, our family, our soul family, our brothers and sisters, to help them to survive. This is my song, How Long. I don't, I don't ever understand how people do not value human life and dignity. But maybe this moment of shift, this moment of pause is meant to create a big change for all of us. May we learn, may we grow, may we give, may we help, and may no human being in the world be starving and be lacking in dignity. All it takes is a moment to turn things around. 
All it takes is a moment to feel love abound. I want to feel that feeling. I want to know that place. I want to hear the answers. I want to see your face. How long do we give love unconditionally? Do we see each life as holy? Until we get there, will we get there? Till we take your words to heart. How long? How long? Shalom, shalom, Keta family. I'm Walei Isaac from the Bembe Synagogue. And those are the people which have endeavored to partner with us this time. And uh, I think they have, some of them, they have, they have a few words to say or share with you. All it takes is a moment to reach out our hands. All it takes is a moment to truly understand. I want to stand beside you. I want to make amends. I want to see your inside. I want to be your friend. How long till we give love unconditionally? Until we see each life as holy. Until we get there, will we get there? Till we take your words to heart. How long, how long? Oh, how long, how long? Yeah, yeah Joel. And so, I'm very happy to deliver my speech to you people from USE. And so, yeah. When you had that you want to help us, we were very happy. And when we receive that, we shall be very happy and every just every uh, just every way I will rejoice. Shum. Until we lay down our arms and let the world in cease Until we break the silence that breaks the hearts Of children crying, of hungry dying How long, how Until we see each life as holy Until we get there, will we get there Till we take your words to us How long, how long Oh, how long, how long Oh, how Thank you. Shalom, friends, and thanks for joining us for this concert. Last December, my wife Marcy and I had the opportunity to visit with the Abba Yudaya community. It was so powerful uh, to see this beautiful community, the wonderful children, um, adults, and children so dedicated to Jewish life, Jewish learning, and Jewish community. While we were uh, davening on Shabbat morning, 
We had the opportunity to say the Shema together, and as I was gathering my tzitzit, the four corners of our talit, couldn't think and help thinking about the significance of that moment, bringing the four corners of our talit, signifying the four corners of the world and the Jewish people coming together from all over the world and being held together in our hands as one. And of course, as we recite the third paragraph, we take those corners of the tzitzit and we give them a kiss, signifying our love both for mitzvot, but also for the Jewish people wherever they are. And I have to say, after coming back from Uganda and visiting with Yabba Yudaya, every time I take those corners together, I think about all of the Jewish communities I visited, including the Abba Yudaya, and I give them a kiss, signifying my love for Jews all over the world. Now we have an opportunity to uh, share that love and caring through a special gift to this community, and I hope you'll join my wife Marcy and I in making such a gift to support the Abba Yudaya in this particularly challenging time. Hi, I'm Rabbi Deborah Newman Kamen, past president of the Rabbinical Assembly. This past December, I traveled to Uganda with members of the Rabbinical Assembly and spouses for a once in a lifetime amazing trip to our conservative Masorti community in Uganda. We got to learn about the community, meet the people. We were greeted so warmly. And I will never forget the amazing Shabbat we spent. We got to pray both Arab Shabbat and Shabbat morning with a wonderful, warm, musical community with many, many young children dancing during the service with drumming, with joy. And most remarkable, we also got to pray from Sidur Sim Shalom, the prayer book of our conservative movement. The service is egalitarian, and we watched women fully being able to participate. That morning, several women had their bat mitzvah, and we watched with them with awe and tears as they read from the Torah for the very first time. Now we know that that community, our community, is suffering with the challenges that they face due to the virus. Our hearts go out to them. We wish them the best and we're here to support them with our love and with our finances. We want you to know that we love you, we miss you, and we look forward to the day where we can be together once again. Hi. This is Chazan Mike Stein from Los Angeles. And uh, I've just finished observing Havdalah with my community on the Zoom. And you know, in Africa, when we celebrate Havdalah, it's always at 7.30 because, well, where the, the uh, Abba Yudaya live in Uganda, because it's very close to the equator. So you look up in the sky and you see it's like painted. The stars are painted, it's so beautiful. As we look to the next week, we think about uh, things that are going to be a problem perhaps, but we have a full refrigerator. Even if we're not working, we have the uh, government helping us with subsidies, with unemployment insurance, with other things. But in Africa, where the Abayudaya live near Mbale in East Africa. It's not so easy. There is no food security. There is always, there is always a problem about where am I going to get my next meal. We just celebrated Passover and we talked about Halach Ma'anya, right? The bread of the poor. We need to help at this time. All of the food supplies, all of the food uh, uh, supply chains are impacted by this pandemic. People are starving. We need to help. Whatever you can do, whatever you can give, help our Jewish brethren and their neighbors survive this horrible pandemic. If they're not working, they are not eating. It's very difficult and it's up to us 
to help our neighbors. Love your neighbor as yourself. We just read that in the Torah. So, my dear friend, Rabbi Gershom, and his entire community, we are with you. We stand with you, and we are going to help in this period of crisis. Let's make it possible for everyone to eat. Give generously. Here's one of Gershom's songs that I just love so much. My choirs sing it, my kids sing it. It's uh, Ose Shalom. May there be peace in the world. May there be food for everybody. May we all come together as one people. Am Yisrael Chai. Ose Shalom, Shalom Bim Romab. Uyase Shalom, Yase Shalom. Hi, I'm Cantor Steve Storr. In 1983 and 1984, I lived in Israel, during which time there was a large influx of Ethiopian Jews. Having the opportunity to work at, at an absorption center, uh, I became very drawn to the story of their lives and the heroism of their lives. When recently I had the chance to go to Uganda to meet with and study with and learn from the Abayudaya Jews, I had that renewed sense of fascination. And so I went, and it was my responsibility and my honor to interview most of the leaders of the community to find out about their wishes, their dreams, their fears, their needs. And it was a fascinating opportunity. It reminded me of the Yehuda Amichai poem called Tayarim, uh, Tourists where he talks to people through his poetry and said, you can see that arch, you can see that building, you can see all of the fascinating historical sites, but what's important is look lower and look at the people walking in the streets with their bags of groceries and, and living life in Israel. It's the people that are part of the history and part of the tomorrows. Uh, and so, too, I wanted to study the history of the Ugandan people and the Abayudaya and where they came from and their fascinating story. But more so, I wanted to get to know the people. And I became ever so engaged and involved with some of them. Uh, one of them who is still in high school that we try to assist through her schooling. Some of them need help with medical bills and with newborn children and with housing. Uh, my synagogue was going to help sponsor the visit of four of these youth to come to visit with us for two weeks here in the States. But unfortunately, it was set for the Passover season this year when the COVID virus um, changed the world for all of us. I think the opportunity 
to help these people is a huge mitzvah that doesn't always come um, to us. We have to go to it. We can't wait for them to ask us. We have to look around the world and find those opportunities that we have to make this world a little better place. I could quote a lot of uh, idioms and cliches about being responsible for one another and uh, Israel is the, uh, the leader in, in taking, taking a charge in caring for others when you see world disasters. We always see Israel at the fore. They don't always get the news coverage, but they're there. And it, it mirrors the sentiment of the military leaders of platoons and brigades in the Israeli army when they yell, Acharai, come with me, come after me. Meaning the leader goes first, like Nachshon who jumped into the water to help the waters split as the Jews made their exodus from Egypt. This cry of Acharai, follow me. It's not the leader at the back going, go get them. I'll be here, God willing, when you come back. But rather, Acharai, follow me, and let's make those first steps to uh, helping those and saving those who need to be saved. If you ever get the chance to study or meet this beautiful Abayudaya community, uh, you will be inspired by their love of Torah, their love of davening. They all want to learn how to lead prayer. Many of them, before they enter their sanctuary, take off their shoes, lest they have been walking in some muddy place or some defiled place. They don't want to bring that into their holy space. They're really acutely aware of the holy in their lives, and they and they are so preciously guarding it. And that's the traditions that were passed down to us, is the same tradition that they have uh, accepted into their hearts. Their ruach, their knowledge, their um, desire to be better Jews and better people is a, a remarkable passion that, that I applaud. And I hope you would do the same and, and support these people that are suffering so terribly. The simple things such as water or food or shelter that they need. Um, I'm, I'm willing to match you know, donors, uh, gifts. I, I can, I, I do support them to the best of my ability already, but I'm willing to, to donate another $500 if, if other people can, can match those pledges. Um, $5, $10, $20, and with my 500 and your collective 500, maybe we can send them another thousand. And if others are doing this, maybe we can send them oh so much more that they really, really need. So God bless you, God bless them. And let's pray for uh, healing for one another. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Each person who is called up for an aliyah to the Torah within the Abu Adai community is greeted with that beautiful melody. Hallelujah, praise God. Praise God because that person matters, because that person should be embraced, should be celebrated. This is a lesson I learned being a part of the community for just a short while over a year ago with my Cantor's Assembly colleagues. I learned that my happiness, my joy is tied up with theirs. My sadness, my grief is tied up with theirs. It's no longer theirs and ours. But it is all of us together. Towards the end of our trip, we had an opportunity to teach, teach melodies, teach text. And so I shared a melody by Alana Yagoda for Urset Shalom, a song that talks about peace, talks about wholeness for the, our entire world. That me in Jacksonville, Florida, that I cannot be joyous, that I cannot be at peace if I know that there are others in our midst, in our community, around the world, who suffer. And I know that if they are celebrating, then maybe that brings me a little celebration as well. So I want to share the words of Ose Shalom with you. Ose Shalom Bimroma Shalom, be Roma, who ya say, who ya 
yase, who yase, shalom. Who yase, who yase, who yase, shalom. Who yase, who yase, who yase, shalom. Amen. May the one, may the one who makes priests bring peace down, bring peace down. May the one, may the one who makes peace bring peace down, bring peace down. May the one, the one who makes peace bring peace down, bring peace down. May the one, may the one who makes peace bring peace down, bring peace down. I hope and pray for healing, for peace, for wholeness, for our community of Jews all around the world and all of God's children everywhere. Amen. Our uh, joining together really started through the efforts of Sharon Brooks, who is one of the teachers in our religious school. In 2016, a young man named Yonatan Katsukaro reached out to me on a Facebook Jewish education page. In 2018, Yonatan came and spent some days with us in Lawrenceville and had the opportunity to join with us in a celebration picnic. At that time, we decided that our community and that of Kampala, Uganda, would become sister communities. We used technology to communicate through Facebook and WhatsApp, uh, sharing videos with each other. We've learned about how they do Judaism in Uganda, and they've learned how we do Judaism here in New Jersey. We've shared holidays. And the creation of two prayer books, a Friday night Sidor incorporating both the prayers in Psalms in the Luganda language, as well as traditional prayers from the Sim Shalom prayer book. This past year, we created a beautiful Haggadah, incorporating the artwork and photographs of our two communities and our students. They've brought just a, an amazing spirit to us. And we hope that this relationship will continue even during the pandemic. When Yonatan reached out to me again and said, we need your help, we're hungry. The quarantine has left us without food and access to vital services and sanitary equipment. We've been blessed to be able to help the Abu Yudaya through raising some funds. We hope that will continue. We hope that the Jewish communities around the world will help to support this thriving, beautiful community. I appreciate the ability to work together with them and with the opportunity that they've presented us to work together with the, on the principle of Ein Kemach Ein Torah, without bread there is no Torah. May we all uh, be able to provide the support that this wonderful community in Uganda needs. Thank you. Shalom, my dear friends. My name is Shadrach Mugoya, the spiritual leader of the Namutumba Synagogue. I'm very grateful to extend my gratitude to you and also to let you know that right now Namutumba Synagogue is in local town and the whole country. We are not having services anymore until COVID-19 is overcome. We are having, however, we are keeping Shabbat in our houses and the, with, I sit always with my family and learn more about Judaism and Shabbat and all that is needed. Uh, I hope to have my Smith in two years from now. Aleph will be giving me the Smith through Reb Mama Leila, who hope to travel to Uganda and we celebrate together. I thank you so much once more and hope to be in touch always. Shalom. Friends, we know this is such a difficult time and in hard times Jews always turn towards the Psalms. So Psalm 56 verse 4 says, Yomira, at a time of fear, I will, I will put my trust in God. 
and we'll put our trust in the God spark in each other to help each other to know that we're in this together and that we love you. So we want to offer this psalm to you. Yomira, 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 Ani elecha. Eftach, ani elecha, eftach, ani elecha, eftach, ani elecha, eftach. Yom mira. the program so far. I want to tell you a little story about when we were on our mission. We had gone with a commitment that we were not going to sing. A bunch of cantors not going to sing. And uh, because we wanted to learn from them. What we didn't know when we got there is that they had the exact same commitment as we had, that they wanted to learn from us. So when we got there for, for Shabbat in Nabugoya, they asked us to, to lead. I was asked to lead Mari. So I got up and I did my, my usual thing. <clears throat> and when I came close to Micha Mocha, somebody came over to me and got my attention and said, they're going to do theirs. And I didn't know what theirs was, so I just, when we got to that point, I just hung back. And what I heard was this beautiful, haunting melody 
unlike any of the rest of their music. It was a cappella, no drum, no guitar, and it went like this. Mi chamocha, mi chamocha, baili madonai, mi chamocha neda ba kodesh, norati lord, o sefele, mi chamocha, mi I just love that piece. If you haven't had a chance yet to make your donation, I would encourage you, if you're feeling inspired, if you if you have the ability, please give generously. Please stop or pause the recording right now and go to www.canters.org forward slash abayudaya, A-B-A-Y-U-D-A-Y-A and make a contribution of any amount. Anything that you can give will help feed, feed a family, will help feed a person. We've got a lot more great stuff coming up, so keep, keep watching. Shalom, uh, greetings from uh, Mkono, uh, one of the newest uh, communities of uh, Jews. Uh, we are about uh, 23 families with uh, 71 members. Uh, we are right now in this world crisis and in Uganda it has affected us differently. Uh, the crisis of the COVID-19 of which it has necessitated the government to institute uh, measures of lockdown. Uh, apparently with those 71 members which include uh, adults and children we have only about three adults who are working. Uh, two of them are into the nursing, medical uh, fraternity, and then one is a, a, a security personnel. So right now, the need of the community is uh, food. Most of the members are not working, and the effect of uh, the COVID-19 lockdown is creating a lot of uh, anxiety. Because we don't know when it is going to end. Uh, recently, our president extended the lockdown situation for another 14 days and right now the needs are food basically thank you very much Todaraba. shalom everyone my name is alan zirawa spiritual leader of nasani community and president of the Abaydaya men's club i do have a message to share with you and i'm requesting you to pay a little attention currently in my community things are not well People have no savings from which they can sustain themselves during the quarantine and yet on the other hand the government has no capacity to provide for everyone as it runs a very deficit budget. Pressure is being mounted on us as leaders and we are too unable. I would like to appeal to all our friends in the diaspora and well wishers to please consider donating through the Kenta's Assembly to help save the starving, com uh, the starving communities. I thank you very much. May God bless you. Shalom, everyone. Um, so my name is Jonathan Katz Lukato. I'm from Uganda, from the Abayudaya community. Um, I was born Jewish and I've lived a Jewish life. Uh, so um, I work as uh, the associate director and, and the public relations director at Imarong Jewish Community, Kampala, and I'm one of the founders of the community. Um, so uh, the community was started um, 11 years ago now, and um, it was basically for students who were studying at universities. In, in the capital so um, these are the reasons why we started it up because um, the Jewish community is based in the eastern and uh, we didn't have a place to go for services in Kampala which is very far away from the eastern part of Uganda where the uh, most of the Abayudaya communities are founded so that's why we started up um, a community in, in the middle of the city mostly to bring all the Jewish students much closer to everyone 
and now um, we have people who are not uh, students, we have people uh, with the families who are working in the city, um, now part of the community, and they are strong believers um, uh, in the community, and uh, they, they are actually the pillars of the community. So um, this situation of uh, the pandemic that broke up uh, um, uh, a few months ago have affected uh, mostly uh, people in the city because everything was frozen out. Um, people are not working. All, um, the whole country is at lockdown, so um, it's very hard for people to access working place. Mostly people who work uh, for daily income. Um, they have no access to their workplace, so they are um, starving without food, mostly, because there is no any income that they are earning, there is no any kind of movement in the city, so it's kind of very strange. So that's the situation which is happening to uh, the community right now. Shalom. Bye. Bograd, president of Kulanu, and I'm so glad to be cooperating with so many other organizations to support the Abiyadaya, whom I've known and loved since 2001. The Abiyadaya community has taught us about interfaith cooperation with their neighbors, about Jewish spirituality, about persistence. I love their song, We Shan't Give Up. And now they've asked for our support in a time with the coronavirus lockdown when it's so difficult to get food. Thank you to each of you who's digging deep into your pocket to help send food to the Abiyadaya and their neighbors to help them through this very difficult time. Thank you.
Let me say hi to everyone for the Kenta group. I would like to let you know that people from Narubemt, they are doing well. As, as Judaism is concerned, but one, one thing is threatening us. COVID-19 is threatening us. So people are now in the total breakdown. People they are now crying over hunger. No food. Our food is not ready. Our maize is still is still premature. So people they are now leaving mouse to mouse there is no food people they are now eating one meal please we don't know whether this COVID-19 will where it will end I am requesting that if there is any assistance let us fight hard and we see that our our Jewish people in in Uganda, they are getting what to eat so that they can survive. What I know that they will survive because they have now free people from from Egypt. They have now free people. Let us work hard in hand to make sure that we can solve the challenge of food shortage in our community in Arudem. Thank you so much. However hard that message, let us, let us pass to each and everybody so that we can help our people from, from our entire community in Uganda. Because we are now in we are now in total lockdown. No work. For me, I have been teaching somewhere, but the school, they have closed every school in Uganda. So I am totally down, particularly on the side of food and buying some sources for, for food. We are lacking. Actually, for people, they are now getting one meal in a day, which means they are now in a total famine. Thank you so much. However, rich on this information, let us pass to each and everybody, every, every amount can be helpful to our community. Thank you. Group of Kenta Assembly, thank you so much. That is what I have to talk on my community now. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Village Connect, we've been working non-stop during this worldwide pandemic to help our partners in Uganda get emergency food relief. Let me share a little bit about what's been going on. The country's in lockdown. Recently, some of the restrictions have been lifted, but they don't help most people. There's still no way for people to earn any sort of income, which means obtaining food is extremely difficult. Some are surviving on one small meal a day. 
Some are eating sugar cane, some are begging, and some have resorted to stealing, unfortunately. We've given out flour, beans, salt, and soap to over 3,000 people in the last two months, but much more is needed to be done. People's survival really depends on this food. Let me share a few of the comments from those who delivered the food. There were tears of joy and relief. One recipient said it was like manna from heaven. Another neighbor of the school said he wondered how we came to give him food when there was no other organizations feeding anyone. There was, they had no other choice. They had no other options for food. Unfortunately, for those who were not able to receive food, there were also tears when the truck drove off. It's heartbreaking. Our work is ongoing and we need to do another food distribution now. We ask that you join us in helping to get food to those who need it most. Please consider donating. That's it for our program. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you've come away with just a little bit of a taste of what the people, the Jewish people of Uganda are like and why we came away so inspired to help them and to be their partner. If you haven't yet had a chance to donate, please, as soon as you're finished watching, please go to www.canters.org forward slash abayudaya, A-B-A-Y-U-D-A-Y-A. And we would urge you, please, share this video with your friends. Host a watch party on Facebook. Let people know about it. We're trying to raise $25,000 before Shavuot, and our hope is that you'll be a very big part of that. Thanks again for watching. שלום לישראל אל אמריקה, לכו יחדים, בעולם הזה, קוקי, לונג סייד דוד, לונג סייד רוחמן, this year is a tune, you know. In Africa, we are the news in Africa. In Africa, we are the news in Africa. Why they see the founders, founders, better than spend that we get.